Hey Virgo. Hey, how's it going? This is your girl D with Hidden Truth Tarot. Uh, shouting you out today because we're going to do your reading for uh, May 15th through May 31st. And this is a love reading. Uh, so I uh, hope you enjoy it and hope it resonates with you. And if it does, feel free to make some comments below. Just want to let you know I'm, I'm new to YouTube. So this is the first Virgo video that I'm doing. So I really hope that it resonates with a lot of you. And I do really want to hear, um, you know, the comments and reference to uh, if it does. Uh, one thing I want to talk to you about before we get into the reading is I want to talk about uh, the retrogrades that are going on right now because they're affecting all of us. All right. We got Pluto and we got um, Saturn in retrograde. They're both in retrograde in the same house or the same constellation. And that is the 10th house, also known as Capricorn. Now, Capricorn or the 10th house um, is uh, related to career. Um, it's also related to your reputation, uh, how people know you, what you're known as, um, things like that. So when you have uh, planets like Pluto and Saturn in retrograde, um, it could stir up some 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 confusion. Um, first of all, Pluto is a planet that deals with the psyche. It deals with mysticism. It deals with all things that are hidden, dark uh, things that you know people do and they don't really want to discuss with others because that was in the past now type of thing. Um, you know, this has to do with. Uh, uh, the underworld, where we're talking about, you know, occult and things like that. It also has to do with criminal activity, the criminal world. Um, you know, the, all the all the crazy things that go on in the criminal world. Um, Pluto also deals with sex, rebirth, regeneration. Pluto is known for taking something and destroying it and rebuilding it if it needs to, or just destroying it altogether because it is no longer needed. All right. That's what Pluto does when it's uh, station, not stationary, but that's what it does when it is uh, moving uh, clockwise in the order that it should be um, throughout uh, around the sun. Uh, but when it's a retrograde, what it does is with most retrogrades, it brings back the past. OK, so because it's in your um, house of career, your reputation and what you're known for. Um, if there were some unresolved issues, meaning that, you know, it wasn't resolved completely. Uh, Pluto is going to bring this back up to make sure that it is dealt with completely. That's what Pluto does, okay? So if there's any issues that are going on uh, with you in reference to your career or your reputation um, that uh, have maybe some, some things that you might have done that you might have swept up under the rug or some things that were um, half resolved and half unresolved, those things may come back up if they're in your subconscious and it's something that's bothering you subconsciously. It will be... Um, it will reappear and you will have to deal with it. So, you know, Pluto will be like, hey, poke you on the back of your shoulder. Like, hey, remember me? And you're like, damn it, I thought I dealt with this already. Obviously, you didn't, you know, deal with it completely or there's a part of it that you forgot about. So here's Pluto telling you here it is. And Pluto doesn't care. Pluto's not going to do it when it's convenient for you. Pluto's not going to do it when it's convenient for the other parties involved. Pluto's not going to be polite about it. Pluto deals with the underworld. Okay, so Pluto is a beast. Pluto is savage. It will bring it right to you no matter how it's going to bring it. It will drag it by the leg and bring it right to you and drop it in front of you. Like a mouse does when it catches a mouse. Uh, like a cat does when it catches a mouse. It'll bring it to you and drop it right there in front of you. doesn't matter if you sleep. It'll bring it right to the pillow. Drop it right there on the pillow. And, and expect you to, to see what's going on. So that's Pluto in a nutshell, in retrograde, okay? So you got to expect that coming. And then you got Saturn. Saturn is the planet of lessons. It's the planet of challenges. It's the planet of hard knocks, all right? So you got these two hardcore planets in retrograde in your 10th house, the house of career and your house of your reputation and what you are known as and how people know you. So with Saturn, Saturn, it, when it's in retrograde, it brings karma, so if you were doing some things you shouldn't have been doing in your career sector or things that are going to injure or, or, or hurt your reputation, um, you know, it may come back up if it wasn't something that was dealt, dealt with and something that wasn't uh, addressed properly. It could very well come back up. So I am hoping that you guys are doing all right. You weren't doing anything negative, um, putting any bad karma out because... Uh, Saturn in retrograde is karma coming in saying, hey, remember me? I know you don't, but I remember you. Let's sit down and talk. 
and, and, and Saturn is hardcore too. Saturn is challenges. Saturn is known for lessons and teaching people lessons and teaching you, hey, you didn't do this right. So I'm going to knock you upside the head again until you do it. Okay. And then you got Pluto there too. So both of those in the same, both of those plans in the same respect, they do the same thing. Something that you didn't deal with, you didn't put it, uh, into it. It's, and it's on your conscious or your subconscious. It's going to bring it back out. So there's going to be, so between now and uh, October is when Pluto goes uh, stationary. Uh, and then uh, September is when Saturn goes stationary. So between now and the fall, you're going to see a lot of people going through some changes. And hopefully, um, if you're going through changes, there are changes for the better and not for the worse. So I just want to put that word out there to you, let you know what's going on. Now, as far as your planet, your planet, you're ruled by Venus. And Venus is currently in Aries, which is the first, excuse me, the first house. Now, the first house deals with you, your physical appearance, your uh, your personality, like your characteristics, your traits, uh, what people first see when they look at you, you know, your general outlook on the world, your ego, you know, and uh, things like that. So what you guys are probably doing is working on you since uh, Venus is in the first house. You loving on yourself, taking care of yourself as Virgos do. Virgos um, usually take good care of themselves. They, they do try to take, uh, uh, you know, uh, stay healthy and things like that. So and even if you don't, with Venus in the first house, you're going to be uh, 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 drawn to do that. You're going to be drawn to take care of your physical appearance, whether it's changing up your, your look, changing up your clothing, um, you know, um, Working out, eating right, things like that. Just doing things for you. Maybe educating yourself, reading, doing some schoolwork, doing some studies. Um, just your general outlook on the world may change a bit too, depending on what's going on. But also keep in mind, these other planets, they are in retrograde. So you guys got to keep a watchful eye out on what's going on, on people's attitudes and things like that. So when you see people going crazy and bugging out, <laughs> you know, and summer hasn't even started yet um, where I am. You know, um, I'm in uh, the northeast part of uh, the U.S., uh, so it's just starting to warm up. Things are just really thawing out, you know. So uh, the summer hasn't even started yet. So hmm, it's going to be an interesting summer, to say the least. So please keep, your, keep, keep yourself clear. Don't do anything negative because as long as Saturn is in retrograde, karma will come back to you, you know. So don't do any dirt that you don't want anybody to know about because that could very well come back up with Pluto and retrograde. I'm just warning you. I'm just saying. All right. I'm not going to talk your ear off about that, but we're going to go ahead and get into this reading. This is going to be for uh, my, my, my lovely Virgo Massive. This is from May 15th through May 31st in love. All right. So it's going to be a five card spread and then we'll clarify as we go. We're going to find out what's going on with you in love. See what you guys are up to. A well, six card spread, excuse me, I said five, but it's six. All right. And uh, I, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I'm new to YouTube. This is my actual first Virgo video, so I hope it resonates with you all. And, and please feel free in the comments to let me know if it does and let me know what part resonates with you. I'm, I'm really curious to know. All right, so I laid the cards out on the table. And the overall energy for this particular reading is going to be the Empress <clears throat> in reverse. Okay, hopefully you can see that. And I also want to let you know the deck that I'm using. This is the Golden Thread Tarot deck. This is the box here. This is a really cool uh, 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 tarot card group. Uh, I like this uh, card because look at the flexibility of it. You know, and then the gold portion of it here, like it's golden thread throughout. So this is the Eight of Cups I pulled out for you. But yeah, so you'll see the cards as I go through. But yeah, so the Empress in reverse is the overall energy for this reading. Now let's talk about the Empress, okay? The Empress, when she's in the upright, she is confident. She is secure. She doesn't um, make head, you know, heart over head decisions or head over heart decisions. She's always evenly balanced and in control, okay? Now, when she's in reverse, that means the things that I just described are in opposite, meaning she may be out of control. She may not be confident. She may be intimidated or uncomfortable or making head over heart decisions or heart overhead decisions and not balancing the decision making process involved. This could also involve someone um, 
uh, being pregnant or pregnancy on the low or unexpected pregnancy or a problem with pregnancy. All right. So that is the overall energy. So we will put this here. We put that there as a reminder of the overall energy. Now I just want to make sure that this is turned the right way so you can see it. Okay. All right. So let's see what cards we got out here on the table here. So we got six cards drawn. So we got the six of pinnacles. This is you and your energy. Okay. Six of pinnacles. Pinnacles represents uh, you as an earth sign. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Pinnacles represent money. Okay. And when we're talking about sixes, we're talking about cooperation. We're talking about harmony. And the six of pentacles represents equal give and take, sharing, uh, being able to take care of um, everyone involved, not being greedy and not being selfish. Okay, so that's your energy, Virgo. So you're in the six of pentacles energy. Your partner's energy is the death card. Now, this is a major arcana. Okay, so this means that your partner may have already been affected by the uh, Pluto retrograde and things have died between you two. Uh, so, hmm, I'm wondering this if, if this is going to be a reading about somebody trying to come back and get you, trying to come back and, and show you some love. We'll see. But it looks like whatever was going on between you and your significant other that you're thinking about right now while this reading is going on, they, um, at this point, look at the relationship as it is no longer in existence. It is dead. Okay, the cycle is done. Now, the uh, connection between you and the person that you were thinking of is the uh, Four of Swords in reverse. All right, Four of Swords, sword energy, represents um, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. The four, the number four, represents um, manifestation, structure, stability, um, so in this case, with the Four of Swords, um, this could be uh, someone, uh, when it's in the upright, someone is resting in place, you know, resting. Um, there was a big ordeal that went on, um, and uh, somebody is relaxing, resting. This could also represent someone who was in the hospital and they're recovering, uh, somebody who might have been injured who's recovering, somebody who's not well who is recovering. All right, so let's go on and see what else is going on with this reading. Now, in reference to the strengths of your, your relationship with this person, we have the Seven of Swords. Sword, air energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Sevens represent mastery, action, accomplishment. Um, I'm sorry, reflection, uh, assessment, being, uh, being provided some knowledge about something. All right, so it looks like with the sword energy, we know this card is one of the cards that you don't want to get in a reading because this could represent someone doing something dishonest, um, being disloyal, uh, not being fair, doing something behind your back, any kind of uh, negative uh, activity that would hurt or harm someone. Okay, so this is what the uh, strength of the relationship is. You know, we're going to clarify that and find out what's going on with that. Um, but then we have the weakness of the relationship, and that's the Knight of Pentacles. Now, Pentacles represents, this is this is a, a Earth energy. It represents, uh, Pentacles are, are Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Knights are, uh, it can be people, but it could represent a journey. Uh, it could represent a progress um, that's going on. Uh, that progress would be something that is very slow, steady, it's taking its time coming into fruition. Um, if this represents a person, it's a slow, a person who's moving forward slowly, steadily, uh, trepidatiously, uh, meaning that they are taking their time. Now, this knight is the slowest moving energy person, place, or thing in the deck. So as far as moving forward, it's taking its time. Uh, but once it's there, it is solid, it's assured, it's it's not going to be something that's going to be half-assed or, you know, um, you know, sometimey. Like, it's legit, okay? So the only disadvantage of the Knight of Swords is that it takes all, the Knight of Pentacles is that it takes all day for things to come into fruition. But once they do, it's all good. Now, as far as the uh, outcome of the relationship situation, I have the Eight of Cups for you. Now, Cups represent... Uh, Water energy, which is uh, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, all right? And we know that eights represent action, accomplishment, mastery of something, all right? So it looks like um, 
with the eight of cups, somebody mastered the, op the uh, uh, how can I say that? They mastered the ability to walk away from a relationship that they really were invested in. It took a lot of work because there's a lot of cups here uh, showing that. If you look at the traditional Rider weight deck, you will see that there's a picture of a person. There's cups spilt over, eight cups spilt over, and there's a river. They're on a bank, a river bank, and uh, the person is walking away from the cups. Okay, so this cup, this card represents the fact that somebody walked away from a relationship that they were really invested in. Okay, so now let's see what we need to figure out and see what's going on here because. Your partner looks like something ended with them for sure. Uh, now things are balanced as far as you're concerned. Um, and the relationship as far as the strengths was the seven of swords, meaning that there was disloyalty, dishonesty. Um, and someone is stressed out about it because the connection between you and two is that the four of swords in reverse, uh, meaning that someone is not resting. They're not at ease about this situation. Um, and again, the uh, challenges in the relationship is the Knight of Pentacles. So maybe if there is anything that you guys are going to work on, it's going to take a while, a long process to do so. And then the outcome, it looks like um, it's not going to work. You guys are going to walk away or somebody's going to walk away. So let's just clarify these cards and see what else, what other information we could get going on. Find out what's going on with you and your partner. Since you ain't telling, the cards don't have to tell. All right, so we're going to clarify your energy, Virgo. You had the six of pentacles. You were balanced. You felt, you know, everything was good, head over heart decision, or you may have your money balanced out now. So let's just clarify that. Yeah, see, we have the lovers, okay? That's Gemini energy, strong Gemini energy, all right? So that has to do with love. So maybe you are looking for balance in love. You were looking for balance in love, okay? So that's what the balance, the six of uh uh, pentacles is basically saying here okay with the lover's card now let's clarify your partners um or your significant other or your ex or whomever you're thinking of let's clarify the death card for them okay so we got the nine of wands in reverse for them okay so wands energy is passionate it's emotional well not emotional because emotional is water sign but it's passionate energy um, uh, something that you really believe in, you know, something that you really put energy and effort into. Um, so that's what wand energy is. Um, it's an action. Okay. So nine represents like, uh, fulfillment. You know, you've reached somewhat of a, um, uh, almost completion, pretty much completion. You got fulfillment. Okay. Um, now when this is in reverse, um, it looks as though, uh, when you look at the what the rider weight deck and you look at the uh, nine of swords uh, in the upright, you see that there is a person there who took their time to meticulously work and put all of these swords, not swords, but all of these wands into the ground one by one. All right. And then that represents the work they did, the work that they put in. But it looks like when the nine of wands is in reverse, somebody stopped working. They're not putting in any work anymore, which represents, which makes sense because we have the death card here. So looks like your partner's no longer working on this. Okay. No longer working on this relationship. All right. So now let's clarify the uh, connection between you and your significant other, your ex or the person of interest. Because that was the four of swords in reverse, meaning that somebody is not at ease with what's going on with this situation. So let's clarify that. And we have that clarified by the hangman in reverse. Okay, so now when the hangman is upright, the hangman usually represents uh, someone who is not making a decision because they don't have enough information or the information that they have, they're just trying to process it so it makes sense so that they can make an informed decision. Okay, this is a little bit different than the hermit card. The hermit card, you go in to reflect. Uh, but the hangman is just, okay, I'm not making a decision. I'm not going to make a decision right now. Okay. So um, when it's in reverse, it means that, okay, I'm no longer in that air of not making a decision. A decision has been made. Okay. All right. So we're going to put that here next to the uh, four of swords in reverse. 
All right. And then the uh, card here that represents the strengths in the relationship, that's the eight of swords. I'm sorry, the seven of swords. All right. We want to clarify that. The seven of swords is clarified by the eight of cups. And I want you to forgive me. I misread the outcome of the of the uh, relationship incorrectly. It's actually the ten of cups. So this means that there is going to be a, a positive uh, uh, outcome with the relationship. But let's get to the nooks and crannies and see what's going on. So again, please forgive me for that. All right. So actually, to clarify the seven of swords, we have the eight of cups. And this is similar to the Rider Waite uh, uh, card that I was describing, where you have eight cups here and a person walking away. Um, and there's a lot of emotion here. This represents the water, the lines here. Um, this person walked away. OK, they walked away because there was some deceit here. There was some trickery here. OK, so somebody walked away from that. All right. So now let's take a look and see what the weaknesses were. OK, so we have the Knight of Pentacles as the weakness. So the Knight of Pentacles represents a slow moving process, a slow moving person or um, an issue slow to be resolved or to be taken care of. So we're going to clarify that. That's the weakness in the relationship. All right. And we have the 10 of pentacles in reverse. Now we know that tens represent uh, completion, the end of a cycle. Okay. But this is in reverse. All right. So it means that this is not quite over yet. All right. So this is pentacle energy. This is Virgo energy. Okay. So this is telling me that when a 10 of pentacles is in reverse, it tells me that it's going back to nine of pentacles, wish fulfillment. Okay. So it looks like this is what is going on as far as the uh, weaknesses in the relationship. Uh, you guys, it appears that, you know, there's definitely wish fulfillment, but it looks like it's you guys are slow to make things happen for some reason. All right. So we'll put that here next to the Knight of Pentacles. Um, next, yeah, next to the Knight of Pentacles. All right. And then we're going to clarify the... Uh, Ten of Cups, because that's the outcome of the relationship. I don't know if we really need to clarify that, but let's go ahead and clarify it since we clar clarified everything else. Okay, yeah, so I have a page of Pentacles in reverse here, clarifying the Eight of Cups. Now, Pentacles, again, is your energy, Virgo, a Capricorn, or Taurus energy. Uh, pages represent a mature energy, young energy, a brand new idea. Um, if it represents a person, it's an immature person. Uh, a, a, a new person, a new interest in, in reference to uh, a potential money opportunity. Pentacles could awful also uh, represent love. And since this is a love reading, uh, we can assume that this is in reference to uh, that. Or because you're Virgos, um, this could be love and money. Um, it just depends here. But it looks like the, the uh, page of Pentacles is in reverse. So it looks like there's not going to be anything... Uh, any new fresh idea meaning that this may not be a new love it might be somebody uh that you have already been in a relate well obviously it's someone you've already been in a relationship with uh because um it looks like the death card occurred um and somebody wasn't working on this anymore so uh it could just mean that maybe this is a little bit stagnant um somebody might be toying with the idea of uh, a, a a brand new start Let's clarify a little bit more here because it doesn't, it's not making sense to me. You got the eight of cups, the ten of cups, but then you got the page of pentacles in reverse. So let's see here. Let's clarify that further. And we have the five of pentacles. Okay, so that's in reverse. Okay, so, all right, well, that makes sense now. Okay, so we have the eight of cups as the final outcome, the ten of cups as the final outcome. And that was clarified by the, uh, page of pentacles further clarified by the five of pentacles in reverse okay so it looks like there was a, a point in time where there was no love being exchanged no brand new fresh uh, ideas of love between you all and then uh somebody came out of the cold okay with the five of pentacles here so that's why you guys have the uh, ten of cups so it looks like you guys are work you're going to be working on things so an x is coming back okay long story short uh, X is coming back. Um, but the overall energy, remember, is the uh, the Empress in reverse, meaning that this X is coming back. 
Um, but for some reason, you uh, want to make sure that you have control over your emotions and that you just don't jump in. But let's see why. Okay. There was this, there was some deceit here. So we want to clarify uh, the Eight of Cups and the uh, Seven of Swords. Because the Seven of Swords was the original card that showed up within the relationship's uh, strengths. Okay. And I'm going to shuffle a little bit more. Drop the card. I had to pick it up. So we're going to clarify the uh, Eight of Cups. And that's clarified by the Tower. Okay. This is more Scorpio energy, more Plutonic energy, okay? The death card was also Scorpio energy, Plutonic energy, all right? So it looks like something happened, all right? There was a definitely a tower moment, which is why the death card was here, okay? So let's clarify the tower card a little bit further and see if we can find out what happened. We know you're getting back together, but what brought you apart? Okay, you have the King of Cups in reverse, this is Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. This is actually uh, Cancer energy. Um, and when the King of Cups is in the upright, excuse me, upright position, he is a very loving, very intuitive, kind king. He is somebody who is very romantic, very into his partner. Um, uh, his partner uh, uh, really adores and, and appreciates uh, the emotion that he uh, exudes uh, when he's dealing with his partner. Now, when he's in reverse, this means that it's the opposite. He's not being loving uh, and kind to his partner and or uh, he is not showing any affection. He's not being intuitive. Uh, he could actually be being uh, kind of a physically uh, 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 aggressive towards the partner. And this is, again, energy, so I don't mean to say he or she as in the person. Usually these two cards do represent a person, but we both have, but men and women have both masculine and feminine energy. So this is representing a masculine energy of somebody who maybe is not being as intuitive as they need to in reference to the needs of the relationship, the needs of the partner, not showing the partner love or manipulating the partner. But I would think that because you guys are getting back together um, and you're coming out of the cold, that there's just basically there was no love or the love that was uh, being given by this energy uh, wasn't fair and balanced. All right. Um, and so it stressed somebody out because you had the four of swords in reverse. All right. So let's clarify this further here. Let's clarify the king of cups further. All right. That's the two of swords. All right, so yeah, that's air energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So yeah, it looks as though a decision had to be made as to uh, what was going to be done in reference to uh, the uh, relationship and the nature of the relationship. And it looks like a decision was made. You guys decided to come out of the cold, okay? And you guys decided to work things out and get back together. All right, Virgo. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that things are working out for you and that you were able to work things out with your partner. Um, it looks like you just got to have um, balance and strength to get this going here. You know, you want to uh, be in control of your emotions here and, um, you know, move forward. All right. So this has been your reading for May 15th through May 31st. Please feel free to comment below uh, if the reading resonates with you. And I will see you guys uh, for your June reading. All right, Virgos, take care.